my, my friend and I, we raise chickens. She raises chickens to sell eggs. They have uh, 50 chickens, roughly. And I have about a dozen. And both of us hatch eggs. And when you hatch eggs, you can't control how many roosters you're going to get. So right now I have three roosters. I only want one. She has about a dozen roosters. And I think she only wants to keep two or three. And so we've got all these extra roosters. Well, roosters can become meat for the table. And um, both of us have a desire to let the roosters grow up to full maturity before we process them. We are making a chicken tractor rooster coop. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, it's a chicken tractor because it's mobile. It's on wheels. It can be moved around so that they can have new grass. But she's also thinking about putting it in its own fence, electric fence, so they can actually have more space to, to wander about. There's a full-grown rooster here. And here's a younger one. See his tail feathers beginning to grow out. These younger roosters, since they're low on the pecking order, they are subservient. And so she thinks that it's possible to lock up the young roosters together. They have a band on the main rooster, band on his leg so that they can identify him as one of their main roosters. I think they have two or three main roosters for a flock of 50, but then they have 10 extra roosters that they don't want. So for now, they're growing and they are fattening up, but we want to separate them from the ladies because it's, it's too rough for the ladies. They wind up getting beat up and they lose a lot of their feathers. It's just too hard on them to have so many roosters around them. We have two roosters right now. With our small flock, it's not a good idea to have two. Actually, we have three. There's a third one right there, but it's, he's very young. But I, I don't like having more than one rooster. I like having a rooster. I just don't like to have more than one. It creates problems. Problems for the lady. It's actually rough on the ladies. See her back? She's missing a lot of feathers. He's uh, younger, and uh, he kind of is an outlier. We're going to have to do something with him. He's probably going to have to become food for the table. So he just kind of hangs by himself, usually. He'll, when the other person's not in sight, that's when he'll do his thing with the ladies, but he doesn't get as much opportunity. So he has to be very careful. And having two roosters, usually there's way too much crowing going on, and that's that's annoying. Now they have a big chicken tractor. They move around occasionally. Oh, you poor guys. The roosters are locked up in these small cages inside the coop. Well, we're working on a plan, guys, to make you a bigger space so you can have some outdoor time. It's actually kind of shaded in here. Pretty cool. Yeah. Here's a rough sketch, and it's very rough because the dimensions are totally wrong because this is way too narrow. Up here is going to be an enclosed coop where the roosters will roost, and this door will serve, will double as a ladder. This will all be covered with chicken wire here, but hard wire all the way around the base. There'll be an open door here. So um, this is like an open area that there's enough room for the roosters to wander meander down in here if they should stay locked up in here but if but um she's thinking about putting an electric fence around so that they can go outside and they would just open this door it will have a rope on it to pull it so we can move it and it will have tires on the back okay so here i worked out my plan this is what the roost looks like we'll have a roosting places there. It can accommodate up to 10 to 12 uh, roosters. The front panel will look something like this. I'll have to work out the actual door. The back, um, the opening of the coop or the coop door, um, it'll be here. And this is the back end. And this will all be covered with the board. I'm not sure if I need to leave an opening space or not uh, for ventilation. So these are the two sides, and they're on skids, sort of, um, with a 
we'll put a tire there we need to round up the edge so it'll be easier to pull it so it doesn't stay in one place all the time i mean this way the ch the, the roosters get to live for uh, six seven eight months whatever and enjoy you know chicken living and being outdoors and roaming free but yet uh, this way we can control not having too many roosters with the hens because it's rough on the hens and the hens we need to keep the hens happy so that we have good eggs and plenty of eggs to feed our families romeo let me pet you yeah let me pet you you found yourself a spot a comfortable spot yeah you have such a big head okay so we have a load of raw materials we some of it's uh, well it's been recycled once already some of it came from the garden and some of its leftover rabbit cages so we're gonna take all this material trying to work with what we have plus i have some tar paper and some leftover shingles from previous projects and we're going to try to make a mini chicken coop for housing extra roosters so that we can keep our chicken flocks happy. We're working together with our friends. We're kind of combining efforts with our garden and our meat supply. Together we're raising uh, meat birds. Together we bought a pig and we are considering getting some cows and raising our own cows since they have the nice property and we're helping them. So we're going to take this material and we're going to see what we can make. And this isn't going to cost us anything. Working with what we have, recycling materials, and we try to make something that is functional and useful so that the roosters can grow out, get fat, before we process them for dinner. So that's the plan. I worked it out on graph paper so I can sort of figure out the measurements. Like It's color-coded the boards that I need to cut with special angles. I need six of those. They're six foot long, roughly six foot long. The green is um, these boards here, which I need six of those. I need 13 of the two foot boards right here. 13 of those, and I need, I need two eight footers. And this is a 10 foot. So I just work it all out on paper so that I know what I'm doing and I can cut everything. Because we have to build this here, uh, well at least part of it, and then we have to transport it over to her house, my friend's house, where we're sharing in the raising of animals and growing a garden together. So we have to transport all the parts to their house and assemble it, hopefully tomorrow.
But right there is one side. There's the other side. That is going to be the back, um, but I'm going to make the top of it. And we are working out this right here for the front. Um, the trick was figuring out the shape and the cut of this. And I'm still trying to figure out the very top. That's the hardest part. Once I get the pattern perfected, then I cut six of those boards. Shape of the ridge beams. This is how they are cut. That way I can nail the rooster shelf on that crossboard. Here's the back end of it. We will be putting plywood over this top end because it's going to be the enclosed portion for the roosters to roost at night. We are trying to make um, the, the side that we put the wire on, we want all the wood to be flush flat. Finally got the front figured out and the door is framed. It's a little bit more than two feet wide and a little bit more than four feet high. So it's big enough for an adult to get through. We've begun putting the hardwire cloth on and we have to do it in little sections because we're using uh, reused materials and this obviously came from a two foot roll and the two foot is actually a little short. So we're doing it a long way. We're overlapping it and I'm gonna have to do a little wire work to join the uh, different sections. I have a gap at the top where two by four will go on the ridge post. So I just have a little piece stuck in there to hold it temporarily. I'm working on the chicken door, the human door actually, <laughs> for the chicken pen, the front of the chicken pen, big enough for the human to be able to go through. And I'm cutting corner pieces to fit and I'm working in my air conditioned work, wood workshop, which I'm glad to have the AC because it's a hut. It's too hard to work outside in the heat. I know that I'm cutting this board probably dangerously, some people may say, uh, because I'm not using a jig. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but I feel pretty comfortable in doing what it is I'm doing. I just have to keep my line straight. It's, it's, it's and focus on that line. And that's the last corner piece. Now I just have to screw those in to help the door be a lot stronger. There. Now it won't twist. 
twist. The door can be replaced. I'm building the center, uh, the center trusses, I guess you'd say, or roof beams, building it on top of the back. That way I can be assured that it is the same size. Yesterday we put the front on top of the back to make sure that they match up. Two by four, just there, to, just to help hold the gap where the, where the uh, ridge post will go between the two ends, which they'll be screwed to the ridge post once we assemble the whole. Up. Uh, I've been doing that the past two days. <laughs> now we can this flip it over. is going to be the chicken door where the roosters go inside. The door is quite long. It's three feet long, but it's also going to serve as the chicken ladder. It might be slightly short for a chicken ladder, but we'll see how it goes. If it's too steep, we might have to put a platform at the base. So we framed the door by itself and now we're just putting in support boards to connect it to the frame. And I cut that one wrong so it's off center mm. but that's okay. We're going to cover up that part with plywood. We'll put wire here so they have some light coming into their place so it's not totally the very back of the chicken coop. And we will be covering this back section with plywood but I don't want to cut this uh, one full sheet. So I decided to put the center bar in and we'll use this scrap piece over here, which we can cut two pieces. We can cut one for each side, put a seam down the middle. Because plywood came up short and doesn't come all the way to this board and I definitely want it to come all the way up. I think I'm gonna leave that little place right here open and just put wire on that so that they have some ventilation and a little bit of light coming from the back. And putting plywood on also will make the frame even more stable. Here's the front inside look of the front of the chicken coop. It is, and that's my other rooster. He's going to wind up with this flock of roosters. Because it's the front, the whole thing will be wired, including the door. Inside, from the bottom to the peak is seven feet. So I could go in it and stand up. I'd have to bend over though to get through the door. The reason this piece looks shorter is because it's only going to sit on top of the eight foot boards about the middle way, this top section right here.
My sister told me about Home Depot having oops paint. When they mix up a color and it's not quite right. Well, I got this five gallon bucket for $30. Pretty good deal for that much paint. It's more paint than we need. And they sell it at a discount. Not the color I would have preferred. It's kind of a light blue, but it'll do. The wood is old and we thought painting it would just give the wood a little bit more endurance, endurance for the weather. Who would want their house painted this color? Chicken. <laughs> it's not my favorite color, but uh, when you're picking up um, Oops paint, you never know what color they'll have. Um, you get to choose though. I needed exterior paint and they only had two colors and they were both similar. This one is sort of a, it's a blue with a slight green tint. I was hoping for a darker color, but but then again, I suppose a lighter color will reflect the sun, so it'll make it cooler for them, whatever. I don't think the chickens will care what color their little home is. If you want to get some oops paint, just go to Home Depot. Best day to go is Mondays, because a lot of people like to do their work on the weekends. Here it is Saturday, and we are painting, because, you know, things are expensive these days, and any way you can save a buck is useful. Yes, it would have been easier to paint everything before we put it together, before, especially before we put the wire on. But oh well, we were just trying to get it done. It is what it is. See how it wants to drizzle? But if you do this while you're moving it to where you want to go, it won't drizzle. Rotate the brush like this. I can keep the brush from dripping. So if I need to carry it any length of time, that will prevent it from dribbling all over the place. Just a little painting tip for you. Just rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. My brush is loaded, but I didn't drizzle anywhere. I mean, we're outside, I don't mind if paint gets on the ground but I don't want to drizzle it all in my shoes either. Built each part separate and we painted each part. As soon as we're done this painting, we'll be ready to transport it to its location and assemble it there. Part is finished. Now I gotta do the other side of that and then the last piece, that piece. I was just realizing how quiet it is here. The chickens aren't making any noise. They're probably all in the shade somewhere. Let's go find them. Some of them are hanging out here in a shady spot under cover and also in the other pen. And I heard a sound out there in the woods. So they're somewhere out there. Oh yes, I see them. Don't know if I can zoom in on them, but there's some chickens wandering about in among the trees. They're enjoying the shade. I think those are the young ones with the young rooster hanging out that way. Everybody's just chilling. Everything's cool. I'm an artist, so why not? I thought a little rooster above the rooster door would be a nice little touch. And it kind of goes with the black handle and the black latches. So we have it set up in our yard because I want to make sure that it's all going to work fine and to make sure that the pieces are going to fit. We got everything cut and everything ready to assemble before we transport it. Now, when we set it up, I did come across a few issues that we had to resolve. I'll show you what those are. At first, I had this setting up against that but I couldn't figure out how in the world do we screw it together and I wanted this to, to be the same level but what happened was that this was a two by four too short so we had to lift it up and set this on the foot right here and that made it level there but then it created a new problem then I'm a two by four too short underneath so that means I have to add an extra 2 by 4 there because I don't want a gap underneath so I have a, these odd corners because 
This was the easiest way to screw it in from this side into See, that. I had to add a two by four on the back end and on the front end to raise that up. So I cut the floorboard and I was a little bit worried about the roof coming down and having a gap here, but it's okay. If the roof comes all the way down flush to here, then I don't have to worry about that little gap. So that's fine. But I did have to trim off the corner right here. And I just used an Alzar to just shave off the corner of that so that I don't have an issue with putting the roof on. There will be three roofs on this side. Actually, one's in the middle, two on this side. There will be two more on that side. And we just cut these little V cuts to rest it there. And on this side here is on either side to hold it from rolling. And I think what I'll do to keep it from, because I worry about the weight of the roosters and, and then turning the board. So I think I'll just glue in one end so that it won't turn, so it won't rotate with some wood glue. By putting the front and the back on the outside, it actually made the whole thing longer. So the board that I wanted for the ridge post was too short. It's no longer eight feet, it's longer. So I'm having to use a two by six because I had one left over. We use a two by six because it was longer than eight feet. And that way that will be up for the ridge post. So I'm painting those and then we're almost ready. We just got to cut the roof parts. But I did write on the angle how this sits on there. Sits on there good. Right now it's just sitting there. It's not screwed on. So we have all of the parts prepared, ready, all the, the roof parts, the floor cut, the, the, the roosting poles are cut. Everything's loaded into the back of the truck, plus all of the tools and equipment that we're gonna need to assemble it. We will go over tomorrow morning, early, before it gets hot and assemble it in its location. And then we have to put chicken wire across the top of it and put the tires on, put the rope on, and put it in its location so it'll be a home for the roosters. That way we can have happy flocks without excess amount of roosters. The roosters will live their healthy life, their best life, while they're growing up, maturing, and fattening for the dinner table. So that is our rooster solution. I think she looks cute. <laughs> yeah, she looks like a real country girl.
The chickens will appreciate them. Those in there tight. They won't spin. Well, it can spin in space, yes. Not that much. It's enough. To, I mean, they're going to be big birds. I, I figured the three feet might be too short, so we added a block. So it's not so steep. Okay. Yeah, there's ants right there. I'm wondering if that's what's biting them or something else. I don't see no ants on me. I had ants on me when I was standing over there. That's for sure, bro. Lavender oil. I have some in my purse. Well, I have an itch. Wow, it feels I like an ant. I got them on my shoe. Oh, yeah, okay. A peek inside. It's not too dark. We have a light at the top, and then we have light here, and uh, looks good. So, having the light background make it a little easier, also to be a little brighter, not so dark. My husband and I built it. My son is helping me to assemble it. And it looks like he's going to do the roofing too. But we cut everything, painted everything. I planned it all. And he helped with the heavy lifting of the individual parts for assembly. Screw hook here to tie the rope onto through a PVC pipe so it's a little easier on the hands. And we put a couple of screws up here so that way it can hang up here when the door's open so it's not laying on the ground for the chickens to poop on it because we know chicken are great little poopers. wire off at the top and top is uh, like 
almost five feet. I haven't seen the and we could not get chicken wire five foot long. Yeah, yeah, he will, uh, it's 48 inches and two, in, two, two feet, so we're just gonna have to overlap it and zip tie the two pieces together. Uh, meat birds is they eat a lot and they poop a lot and this barrel needs to be taken to the compost pile. Gonna raise meat birds know this you're gonna have to deal with a lot of shit we put it in the compost and it will become food for the garden because we believe in recycling it says it looks like a Victorian chicken coop because I suppose because of the color I didn't think about that. That's kind of cute. I wouldn't have chosen this color, but she likes it, so that's good. She'll be using it on her farm for the roosters or whatnot. Could also even be used for the ducks or a separate flock, or if they just wanted to segregate the babies for a safe place for babies. So there's a lot of uses of having a small mini chicken coop. Okay. It was testing its movability. Thanks for watching.